वेलकम टू एपिसोड फोर्टी टू ऑफ द मोस्ट सीरियस पॉडकास्ट मैन आई डोंट इवन रिमेंबर वेन वॉज द लास्ट टाइम आई रिकॉर्ड इन एन एपिसोड एंड सेट दीज वर्ड्स इट्स डेफिनेटली बीन मोर देन टू मंथ्स आई थिंक क्लोज टू थ्री वेन सिंस द लास्ट एपिसोड आई हैव जस्ट बीन यू नो सो अवे फ्रॉम द होल पॉडकास्टिंग सीन एंड आई हैड टू काइंड ऑफ गो अवे फॉर सम टाइम बिकॉज ऑफ सम हेल्थ इशूज आई एक्चुअली हैड अ माइनर सर्जरी मीन वेल आई गॉट माई टॉन्सिल्स रिमूव्ड Uh, as per my doctor's recommendation because of getting recurrent throat infections so that in itself for some experience uh, post surgery it's it's just a very rough first week 10 days you're not able to speak and eat properly and it's you know just very painful <laughs> very agonizing but uh, i'm very grateful that i made it through so yeah i've been this kind of very much involved in my physical health in the past couple of months and uh, just happy to be back and was feeling like recording something uh it's been so long that we've not had an episode on the show kind of still amazes me that you know the episodes that we've recorded people still tune into them and listen to them and people find them interesting because i really never believed that these conversations would uh, i thought maybe if they could add value but i really didn't believe that this would transcend into a real thing and people actually you know liking the content that they see and listening to the conversations that i've had with people because i just do them for my inherent uh, motivation my inherent motive of kind of quenching my thirst of curiosity and learning more about the people what they do and why do they do stuff and that's always an enjoyable experience for me i think that's something that really sparks uh, excitement and uh, enthusiasm inside me so i'm just super grateful and amazed by every day that someone chooses to listen to this show and derive some value out of it for today i just uh, don't have any agenda again i i was thinking of setting up my camera and microphone and recording an episode because it's been so long and uh, didn't want to have an extended period of break since now i'm able to record and i appreciate uh, having the platform and i have you know having the ability to just sit down and kind of connect with the audiences so i was thinking of doing another solo episode like the one we did on stoicism where we you know i just read through a piece of content on stoicism and gave my commentary on it gave my thoughts on it i think that is something that i enjoy that is a form of content which is kind of very beneficial for me and i kind of believe that it provides some value to the people listening because i try to gather that content from a large unformatted to something which is interesting to something which has meaning to something which is enjoyable and you can you know kind of add some value from it to your life as well. So I recently came across the story of Sisyphus. He was a king in ancient Greeks or Rome. I don't remember exactly and I always somehow end up confusing within these two dynasties, cultures, whatever it is. So uh, yeah, so most probably it's uh, it's 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 one of those and um, we will be talking about the story of Sisyphus and how is it still relevant today and why has it been still relevant since the time of its inception you know i don't know if it's fact fiction whatever but you can never kind of really put a finger to what exactly makes a story or a piece of content or you know just an idea stand the test of time there would have been so many fables but why is the fable of sisyphus still so relevant why is it still so popular and there could be multiple factors to it but sometimes i feel you know the things that have stood the test of time are kind of have something in them which is hard to encapsulate uh through mere factors but it really does have some inherent value to those so let's get into the story of sisyphus the ancient king and what was his punishment <laughs> in the ancient kingdom of corinth there lived a cunning and audacious man named sisyphus he was known for his shrewdness and relentless ambition but above all sisyphus was a man consumed by his pride one fateful day as the sun bathed the city in its golden glow word reached sisyphus that his kingdom faced a grave threat a monstrous serpent named charybdis charybdis sent by the gods as punishment for the people's arrogance and hubris i'm not sure what hubris means should we just look it up i think this could also be good exercise for improving my english vocabulary So hubris means excessive pride or self-confidence. Refusing to bow to the whims of gods, Sisyphus devised a daring plan. He would defeat Charybdis and secure his place as the greatest king the world had ever known. Well, there goes his arrogance, I think. Rallying his loyal soldiers, Sisyphus set forth to face the fearsome serpent. Okay, here he goes. 
Amidst the defeating roars of the monstrous creature, a fierce battle ensued. Sisyphus fought with unmatched valor. Serpent's power was overwhelming. The battle seemed lost, and despair gripped Sisyphus's heart. It's very hard to pronounce this man's name correctly. Sisyphus's heart. Sisyphus's heart. In his darkest moment, Sisyphus saw a glimmer of hope. A magical artifact known as the Scepter of Olympus. I think uh, I don't know how many of you are aware of the Assassin's Creed game series, and I kind of have read all of their novels as well. So they also had this magical artifact, which kind of reminded me of uh, the one that we mentioned here. It was called, I think it was called the Apple of Eden or something similar to that. It kind of revolved around the idea of the people who came before and they left a magical artifact, which you know kind of had so many powers inside of it. that unfathomable anyways another segue to assassin's creed it's a topic which i can talk about on and on and i'm a huge nerd about assassin's creed so we can get to that in another solo episode but back to our story of sisyphus so a magical artifact known as the scepter of olympus he saw a glimmer of hope he saw that artifact legend spoke of its power to subdue even the mightiest of creatures Summoning every ounce of courage, Sisyphus seized the scepter and unleashed its mystical force upon Charybdis. The earth shook and thunderous echoes reverberated through the kingdom. Charybdis's roars turned into agonizing cries as the scepter pa- scepter's power subdued the serpent, leaving it weakened and vanquished. I think I've also seen the graphic of Sisyphus fighting that serpent because I've been through some Greek encyclopedia i guess this is related to that section of mythology only i think victorious sisyphus basked in the adoration of his people his pride soaring to the unprecedented heights but the gods had taken notice of his arrogance well i really don't understand is he arrogant here i mean the guy did did defeat a really powerful serpent which was about to put some threat to his people so Yeah, not really sure if that's an arrogant act. And Zeus and Zeus himself appeared before the triumphant king with a voice that thundered like heavens. Zeus spoke, "Sisyphus, your hubris has defied the natural order." What is the natural order? I don't know. I think it's it's definitely an interesting term to to say. I think it has different meanings for everyone. It's actually a good question to ask people. What is natural order according to you? Some people might relate to the animal order. Some people might relate to the hierarchies that we've built in the modern world. Can't really say what it means for different people, but Zeus spoke that Sisyphus your hubris has defied the natural order. For your audacity you shall face an eternal punishment. But I mean uh, punishment. I am again not sure that why is Zeus so angry with Sisyphus like isn't he just trying to save his people I mean he I get he's arrogant but uh, yeah not really sure about why Zeus is so angry with him Sisyphus scoffed Sisyphus scoffed at the gods refusing to bow to their decree I am a king and no one not even the gods shall dictate my fate now here comes the arrogance I think now I don't blame Zeus for giving him the punishment he declared with unyielding defiance in his fury zeus de- devised a punishment that would humble even the proudest of kings well here here it goes he condemned sisyphus to the eternity of a ceaseless toil every day sisyphus would push a colossal boulder up a steep hill only to watch it roll back down forcing him to begin a new each time i think we can just take a pause here and kind of really think about what's what's this punishment that zeus has just given to sisyphus so zeus gave him a physically taxing and mentally numbing task of pushing a boulder up a steep hill and once it reaches the top it would roll back down so sisyphus essentially doesn't get to rest and he has to repeat this cycle of pushing up a boulder up the hill and then watching it roll back down in this punishment i can kind of in some senses realize how much of our lives are similar in this regard like not in a i don't know 
what's the word pessimistic view of the world or the lives that we lead but often times i feel everyone is kind of leading like a sisyphus punishment to some extent you wake up you do almost every day the same things just to see <laughs> at the end you know that it's just been a similar day i think there's value in a in a routine good life but i think this of course this resemblance in in our day to day life and what sisyphus was subjected to do maybe there could be like another tangent that could be drawn out of this is sisyphus was given this punishment as a product of his pride and his arrogance and this punishment tied him to stay humble and stay grounded so does that mean that we are eternally facing this punishment just because it doesn't allow our ego to get ahead of us maybe that's the value of a routine maybe that's the value of doing something repetitively maybe or maybe not maybe just i'm just you know drawing stupid tangents out of this but that thought came into my mind like does a routine kind of help you control your ego i think it's different from what we're talking about here with the sisyphus story but you know another tangent to think about because i don't believe kings would like sisyphus previously before this punishment he wouldn't essentially have a routine routine he was the king and he was really powerful and he was really arrogant so he kind of did what he wanted to do at any given moment and that was his ego kind of taking control of him his mind his body and now he's been given this punishment by zeus who ties him to a task which eternally just makes him repeat a very taxing physical and mental condition let's get back to the story and see what happens so sisyphus had been given the punishment that he would push a colossal boulder up a steep hill only to watch it roll back down forcing him to begin a new each time the first days of his punishment were filled with rage and frustration sisyphus cursed the gods and heavens vowing to escape his fate but as the cycles of struggle continued something within him began to change in the monotonous rhythm of his eternal tasks sisyphus found meaning he realized that his punishment was not only a consequence of his arrogance but a reflection of the human condition itself this is really interesting and it kind of ties back to what we were talking about earlier that the punishment that sisyphus had of repetitive monotonous cycles of routine that is very similar to most of the lives that we lead and trying to derive trying to find meaning in grand conclusions is one way and realizing that there is meaning in the monotonous routine could be a perspective as well and a similar thing happened to sisyphus during his repetitive challenging punishment he was able to recognize that there was some meaning to this task there was some meaning to this his punishment was not only a consequence of his arrogance but a reflection of the human condition itself the boulder became a metaphor for life's struggle our ceaseless efforts our joys and our sorrows as the years turned into eternity sisyphus embraced his task with stoic acceptance he no longer fought against his fate but now found solace in the simplicity of his labor the struggle became his purpose and he discovered a new found peace within himself which is actually very inspiring to me at least to be able to realize and recognize that things might not always be you know as grand as you kind of think them to be and also to be conscious and cognizant enough to realize that the present moment the present duty the present role and responsibility that you're serving that has meaning if you try to find it that has some inherent meaning to life meaning to yourself i think action always derives meaning and a similar case happened with sisyphus he realized that this human condition is subject to you know all the efforts joys and sorrows as he rolled the boulder he reflected on the folly of his pride and the transient nature of power this is really interesting and it's not just power i think it's with everything with my personal experience of 
not being in my not being in a good physical health condition i realized that how quickly kind of you know times can change and how quickly you are just left at the expense of the change so you are you are very happy in one moment you're just everything is going your way and there could be a phase in your life where you have to struggle a lot you have to push through it you have to start again you have to kind of you know really look inside of yourself and try to find something to hang on to i think that is that makes being present so much more important because everything is transient not just power power is just you know another attribute defined by humans to encapsulate what kind of trying to define control i think that what that's what power is but transience is also human condition everything changes every moment everything changes and you have to make peace with it and you have to appreciate when you can i think that kind of automatically takes away a lot of regrets and takes away a lot of anxiety and puts a whole new perspective to how you view your life as he rolled the boulder he reflected on the folly of his pride and the transient nature of power he found wisdom in the acceptance of life's limitations and the impermanence of human endeavors which is kind of liberating if you think about it the stoic approach this is why i really like the stoic approach to things it frees you up a lot it tells you to just focus on what you can control and if something if you can just identify that things that are outside of your control you have no say in the consequence whatever whatever amount of actions you put in then accepting it and being true to your acceptance really living that philosophy really living that ideal of stoicism i think that's what happened with sisyphus which is actually very interesting for a king to realize the transient nature of power the limitations and impermanence of human endeavors you know he's seen the extremities in in this transformation sisyphus became a symbol of resilience a testament to the human spirit's ability to endure even when faced with insurmountable odds these are insurmountable odds the gods witnessing his profound change took notice zeus impressed by sisyphus's new found wisdom approached him once more you have learned the lessons of humility and acceptance zeus said your punishment has served its purpose with that zeus granted sisyphus's release from his eternal task as the boulder rolled down the hill one final time sisyphus felt a proud sense of peace within himself i think that would have been <laughs> that would have felt really good to sisyphus but this story definitely means a lot if you can sit with the ideal of the story if you can sit with the with what it has to offer i think it gives me certainly a lot of acceptance it gives me a uh, a perspective on how to derive meaning out of daily life and how to not wait for grand things to kind of label them as life so we've been fed that big moments and grand conclusions are life but they're not different from any standard or bland moment from your life like i always find uh this fact and this approach very interesting that every day has 24 hours your best day has 24 hours your worst day has 24 hours the day that you're feeling elated happy joy on top of the world that has 24 hours and the day you're just feeling the weight of the world that also has 24 hours time is indifferent to human condition time is indifferent to human experience which is very liberating if you think about it also kind of ties down to the idea of giving every moment its due respect and also its due admiration but at the same time acknowledgement as well this is what i've kind of observed with my meditation practice as well that just being in the moment just being able to acknowledge you know your daily life 
and being conscious of what you are living is in itself a very good experience so i think the sisyphus story has a lot to offer and i kind of personally for myself as i was reading it through with you again uh, it gave me a fresh perspective on things it allowed me to think about uh, certain tangents and uh, it was a good experience <laughs> to know about the story of sisyphus and it all's well that ends well so zeus finally relieves sisyphus of his punishment and so the myth of sisyphus endures as a timeless reminder that life's struggles need not be futile instead they can be a path to enlightenment a journey of self realization and a testament to the strength of the human soul and to the human body and to the human mind thank you so much for listening to this episode i don't know how much of uh, <laughs> value was in this i think i go off on tangents and just think out loud when i'm recording these and uh, this is something that i enjoy doing so you will be seeing more of these uh, on the show and uh, there will be uh, again in there will be more recorded conversations with interesting people coming up on the show so stay tuned for those and uh, thank you so much for listening to this i hope you have an amazing day or night at whatever time in whatever part of the world you're listening to this show I'll see you again soon. Thank you.